At the end of my last video, I give you a hint into another problem I had after removing the trim and the casing off of the doors. Someone had commented that it was the space between the door jam and the door opening. That's only a problem if you don't have wide enough casing to cover the gap. The problem was either not enough or no shims, or the shims were in the wrong place. I like to place my shims in the top corners. You can see by this view, this shim is loose and doing nothing. It's also in a place where I don't install shims, especially on the strike side. Then I had some areas where they just didn't put any shims at all. And I definitely don't like installing shims on the top head piece. There is no shim needed here, and it gives me options later on. If I make a mistake or something moves with the door, I have adjustments because there's no shim there. On the hinge side, I like to have my shims closer to the hinge, and in the center hinge, I may not shim it, especially if it's a hollow core door. You don't really need that one. You can see after remove the casing on this door, minimal shims. One side doesn't have hardly any at all. So I'm going to show you how I fix this problem. Just in case you come across it, you'll know what to do, and you'll be able to do it the least amount of work. I didn't remove the doors. I left them in place. And I left all the shims in place as long as they weren't in my way. First thing I'm going to do is take my six foot level and place it against the hinges. I can't get to the jam because it's on the inside wall, so placing it on the hinges will work just fine. You can see here by reading the bubble, the door is plumb. Now there is an area where the jam is a little bit too tight to the door, but I'll be able to fix that later without shims. Now they do have shims at the bottom hinge, but I'm going to want some at the bottom of the door casing. They also have shims at the top hinge, but I like to have them at the top corner as well. The area you need the most shimming is going to be on the hinge side. That's the side that's doing all the work. Now that I know the door is plumb on the hinge side, I'm going to leave that side alone and remove all the shims from the strike side of the door. Then I'm going to shim the top two corners. And I'm going to install these shims just below the top head piece. That's so I can nail through the jam into the shims. Before I nail anything, I'm going to check the margins on both sides. Then I'll stick shims on the other side. Then I'll close the door and check the door margins again. You can see here the margins are the same on both sides and across the top. So before you nail anything, make sure this top margin is even as well. If the margin is uneven, like the one shown in this clip, you will need to stick shims at the bottom of the jam next to the floor. I would lift the jam with a pry bar and slide shims under it. And all I want to do here is lift it up enough to tighten the margins. And I will keep checking and adjusting until the margin is even. Once I'm happy with the margins, I'll install a nail or two just to hold everything in place. At this stage, I'm shooting the door in with 18 gauge nails. When I'm done setting my margins, I'll change over to 16 gauge nails to permanently set the door. I'm not going to install all the nails at this time just in case I have more adjustments to make. Now I'll go down to the middle of the door and shim the strike area. What I like to do is hold the jam close to where it needs to be. Then I'll hold it in place with my hand and shoot one nail. This nail will keep pressure on the shims while I'm adjusting them. This way here I can step back and check my margins. Here you'll see I'm pretty close and the margin needs to be a little tighter. Now I can tap the shims in without holding them so I can get the margins where I need them to be. You see the nail is keeping the shims in place so I can stand back and check the margin. Now I just tap the shims in with a hammer until I get the correct margin. Now you can see the margin is the same here at the strike as it is at the top. It may not be even here where I don't have shims. I'll take care of that once I'm done shimming the door. Now I'll work on the margin at the bottom of the door. Because the shim is on the floor and the jam is already putting pressure on the shims, I don't really need a nail here. Before I finish nailing the jam, there's one more area I need to check. I need to check the gap from the door stop to the door. You can see here at the top, the door is touching the door stop. Now we'll look at the bottom of the door, and you can see the door is not touching the stop. 
Now, because this door stop and jam are molded as one piece, there's only one way to fix the door. That's by tapping the door jam at the top or the bottom as needed until the stop touches the door. Now, because this gap is not very large, I'm just going to tap the jam over until it touches the door. Once I'm happy with the door stop margin, I can shoot the rest of the nails in. The method I just showed you is for when the door jam and the door stop are molded as one piece, as you can see here. Now, had the door stop and door jam be two separate pieces, all I'd have to do is use a scrap piece of board and tap the door stop over until it touched the door. Once that's adjusted, the door might be a little loose and rattle a little bit, but we can fix that by bending the tab on the strike. Now to adjust the margins where I don't have shims. I'll hold the jam in place with a pry bar because it's really close to being where it needs to be and shoot in a nail. Now I'll do this at the bottom and the top. I'll either use a pry bar or tap on the jam to get the correct margins. If I go too far, I'll just open the door and tap it back in. These are not critical areas of the door, so they don't need shimming. When I install the casing, the nails from the casing will hold the gems in place in these areas. Just as a quick overview, I'm going to show you where I shim my doors. I install shims at the bottom of the door and just above the bottom hinge. Then I install shims just below the top hinge and at the top of the door. You don't really need them on the center hinge unless it's a solid core door, then I'll put them in. Then I install shims at the top corner and the strike of the door, and then again at the bottom of the jam. One quick tip that I wanted to share with you that I didn't do here uh, because my doors were already installed. If you're going to set your doors from scratch and you're going to have carpet installed, set the jams on 3 8 blocks. That's so the carpet layer can tuck around the jam, and it'll also make the door high enough so you won't have to cut it down once the carpet's installed. Because the doors were already installed, I chose to cut the doors down. Now I'm ready to paint, then trim. Because there isn't any trim installed, it'll be much quicker to paint the walls without the trim. There'll be a lot less cutting in, so it'll go much faster. Then I'll trim all the doors and move on to the base. Until next time, thanks for watching.